Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, Ragged Island residents still reeling even months after Hurricane Irma. An early morning crash leaves one dead and three in hospital. The difficulties of overcoming gambling addiction plus the signs and symptoms of autism. Our news is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Top in news tonight, following a devastating hurricane season for some southern islands last year, international forecasters are predicting a slightly above normal 2018 Atlantic hurricane season with between 12 to 15 named storms. Of those storms, three to five are forecast to become major hurricanes. Jillian Gray tells us more. With less than two months to go before the start of the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season, the National Emergency Management Agency is considering observing May as National Hurricane Preparedness Month. However, even as NEMA officials begin to hit preparation mode, Exuma and Ragged Island MP Chester Cooper says the residents of Ragged Island are still reeling from the effects of Hurricane Irma, which rendered the southern island uninhabitable last year. Regrettably, in Ragged Island, uh, notwithstanding that we are now at the beginning of a new season, uh, residents are still reeling uh, from the impacts of the prior hurricane season. Very little has happened uh, on the ground by way of restoration of, of public facilities, uh, hurricane shelters. Uh, the Anglican church that held up quite well uh, would be the only credible uh, hurricane shelter at the moment. No home or public building was left untouched by the dangerous storm, which left many homes with no roof, windows, or door. Power lines were also damaged, leaving residents without power. Cooper says the island's administration building, police station, and clinic are still in a state of disrepair, and residents are still in desperate need of assistance. Residents are still very much in need of building supplies to secure uh, their properties, uh, they receive very little, if any, assistance uh, from NEMA. So we're asking the government uh, to bring some relief and some support uh, for building supplies and initiatives uh, for individual residents who are unable to, to help themselves in recovering from the devastating impact of Hurricane Irma. In September, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said the island would be turned into the first fully green island. However, Cooper says very little help has been given to residents, some of whom he says are still displaced and out of work. However, he urged them to prepare for this upcoming hurricane season. Residents of, of Exuma, Ragged Island, and across the Bahamas uh, are urged uh, to begin their preparation early uh, so that they are fully prepared by the time uh, a hurricane uh, arrives. Following the catastrophic impact of storms on the Caribbean and United States last year, the names Harvey, Irma, Maria and Nate have officially been retired from the Atlantic Tropical Storm <coughs> List. They have been replaced <coughs> by Harold, Adelia, Margot and Nigel. Reporting for Our News Weekend, I'm Jillian Gray. One man is dead and three others in hospital tonight after a car crash on Paradise Island early this morning. According to Assistant Superintendent Paul Cash, the incident happened just after midnight where a car was headed over the Sir Sydney Poitou Bridge, but did not stop at the toll booth. The car reportedly then crashed into a wall in front of the Club Landor Hotel, overturned and burst into flames. The four people were removed from the vehicle, however, one male succumbed to his injuries en route to hospital. The remaining three are said to be in serious but stable condition. Gambling addiction, a major concern for officials at Sandlands Rehabilitation Center. With staff reportedly dealing with an increasing number of cases, the center will host a symposium this week on how to deal with gambling addiction. Giorgio Bain reports. The Sandlands Rehabilitation Hospital hosted a gambling addiction symposium under the theme Gambling, Fun or Addiction. The purpose of the symposium was to raise awareness of problem gambling in the workplace and community, to bring together clinicians to develop better understanding, and to provide individuals and families with tools and resources to respond to problem gambling. Keynote speaker Dr. David Allen addressed the harmful effects and prevalence of gambling addiction in the Bahamas. Addiction is a united illness that brings together alcohol, gaming, anger, uh, sweethearting, sexuality. Once a person is an addict, it means they continue doing something, even though they have catastrophic circumstances, they continue to do it. So in other words, a person can game but not be a, a gaming addict. A person can drink alcohol and not be an alcoholic. 
My job is to help the addicts to have a confidential treatment program for gambling addicts. According to Allen, a gambling addiction is just like any other addiction that starts with the high a person feels from that first win. The signs of gambling addiction, he says, are risky behavior, obsession, denial, withdrawal, dependence, and unmanageability. They've lost their job. They have increasing debt. They're always borrowing money from friends. At the same time, the wife or the husband cannot understand where they're going at certain times of the night. Many times, uh, women particularly, they spend during the night when their husbands are asleep using credit card debt. So the credit card debt spirals out. And many times they go into drugs or alcohol, so they get a drinking addiction as well. The other sad thing about it is that when they're shamed after having lost so much, because many times when you become a serious gambling addict, you also become a sexual addict. And in that way, you do things not in keeping with what you would ordinarily do. The first step to getting help for yourself, family members, or friends is just to admit that you need help, according to Allen, who says women are more willing to get help than men. This is something he hopes to see change very soon. And right now, um, it's almost five to one women. More women are coming forth than men, and uh, they are willing to admit their problems. It's a very serious issue, but they can get help. I have a number of people, some who've lost their job, and some are going to prison, but because they got their life together, their bosses gave them another chance. But you can get help. The problem is, it's no shame to have an addiction, but it's a shame not to get help. Reporting for our news weekend edition, I'm Georgie O'Bain. You're watching the best of Bahamian news. There is more when our news returns.